I'm sorry, good evening, everybody. What we are going to see today is dextrocardia adjustment. Now, dextrocardia is actually a very, very uh, small topic. However, it is important because it's not that common when we face it. So it's important for all of us to suspect dextrocardia. And once we think that it's dextrocardia, how do we proceed further is important for us to understand. Now, dextrocardia is actually a type of cardiac malformation. What is cardiac malformation? When the heart is located anywhere other than its usual position. So when we say usual position means what? It is the left hemicorex. So if it's not in the left hemicorex and it's anywhere else, then it's malformation. Also in situations where we have total situs inversus, which is called situs inversus totalis, where all the organs are on the opposite direction. And in that situation, if the heart is situated in the normal position, then also it is called cardiac malposition. So how do we define cardiac malposition? That's the location of the heart anywhere other than its usual position in the left hemicorex, or location of the heart in the left hemicorex when the other organs are in abnormal position. Now cardiac malpositions can be predominantly of five types, wherein you have one which is outside the chest wall and the other four are inside the chest. The one which is outside the chest is called ectopia cordis and the one which is inside the chest can further be divided into the dextrocardia, mesocardia, isolated levocardia based on the position of the apex of the heart and also pericardial defect. So there are five types of cardiac malposition and dextrocardia is one of them. We are going to see dextrocardia today in a little detail. So we'll go through the cardiac uh, embryology, clinical features, and investigations in order to understand how to assess dextrocardia. Now, what is dextrocardia? How do you define dextrocardia? Dextrocardia is defined as a right-sided heart with the base apex axis, which is directed towards the right, which is because of a variation in the cardiac development. So it is an intrinsic problem of the development of the heart. That means that the definition clearly says that it does not include an external factor which is manipulating the position of the heart. See, if the heart is pushed by diaphragmatic hernia to the right, you will not call this as dextrocardia in two sense. That means dextroposition is not a true dextrocardia. In true dextrocardia, you need to have an issue with the embryological development wherein you have the axis of the heart from the left shoulder to the right hip. The incidence is 0.01% of light birth and remember it can go undetected for lots of years also. In dextrocardia, you would further see three types of dextrocardia wherein you have Situs solitus, situs inversus, or situs isomerism. So your situs could be different, and based on your situs, you would have internal cardiac malformations varying. The overall percentage of solitus inversus and isomerism is on an average the same amongst all cases of dextrocardia. So when we say situs solitus, dextrocardia, that means the base apex extends from the left shoulder to the right hip, with right atrium to the right of the atrium. With situs inversus dextrocardia, you have the base apex extends again from the left shoulder to the right hip, but the right atrium is to the left of the left atrium. There is an isomerism. You still have the base apex extends from the left shoulder to the right hip, However, both the atria are either like right atrium or left atrium. In general, when we say situs solitus, we are understanding that the visceral situs and the atrial situs are hand in hand, which mostly happens. Occasionally, you can have discrepancy between the two. Now, individually, when you consider it is situs solitus dextrocardia versus inversus dextrocardia, there is a major difference when you suspect intracardiac malformations. Cardiac malformations are much more commoner when you have situs solitus dextrocardia compared to 
inversely dextrocardia. When you have cycle following dextrocardia, your heart diseases are also not only common, but even more complex. Most of the cytus solitus dextrocardia hearts are abnormal. Compared to cytus inversus dextrocardia, most of them are normal. However, they have other morbidities like absence of cilia, etc., to create issues in long term. Now, with this understanding, we will see further dextrocardia can be of two types, primarily based on the cytus. However, it is more related to the embryological understanding. The first one is called the true dextrocardia or the mirror image dextrocardia, wherein you have the situs which is usually inverse. So this goes with totalis, situs inversus totalis, where you have situs inverses and the apex is to the right. However, your situs is abnormal. So it's right atrium is to the left of left atrium and the right ventricle is the anterior ventricle in this type of dextrocardia. Now remember otherwise also the RV is the ventricle which is anterior. The second type of dextrocardia is called dextroversion dextrocardia which happens when light is solitary. Why does it happen when the uh, situs is solitary? It happens because there is a problem with the pivotal axis of the heart. That means what? The axis of the heart is from the base to apex and there is something which happens during uh, the rotation because of which the heart comes and lies in the right side of the chest because of which the LV is the anterior ventricle. So something happens in terms of rotational axis of the heart which is not correct. And in such a way it rotates that the left ventricle comes to lie anteriorly and the whole heart is then lying to the right side of the chest with the axis towards the right hip. So this is dextroversion dextrocardia. And as we decided, dextroversion is primarily not a dextrocardia and it's a situation where heart is in the right side of the chest but it has the apex still to the left. I hope this is clear. Um, so, the mirror image dextrocardia has inverses and the dextroversion has cytis solitis. I will also include a little bit of dextroposition when we are seeing echo images because it's important for us to differentiate dextroposition and dextroversion. Why is it like that? Because dextroversion is also cytis solitis and dextroposition is also cytis solitis. Uh, embryology is important for us to understand dextrocardia because embryology plays an important role why a particular baby has the base apex axis to the right. So for that we need to understand what happens in a normal child wherein you have levocardia with cytis solitis. So what decides that the heart goes to the left side of the chest? So what happens is at around third week of gestation, you have the cardiac loop which is being made. And you know that the cardiac loop normally bends to the right. So this is the bulboventricular loop which bends to the right side. And when it bends to the right side, the right ventricle comes to lie to the right of the left ventricle. Now soon after that, in a few days, once the looping happens on the right side, the apex of the heart migrates towards the left of the thorax. So this is a principle of a development of heart where the looping exactly happens in the direction where after that the apex of the heart migrates in the opposite direction. So the apex migrates in the direction opposite to the looping. In a de-looped ventricle, it moves to the left. Of the thorax. Now, if there is a de looped ventricle and this normal leftward migration of the whole cardiac mass does not happen, then it causes dextroversion with cytis solitis. So, this whole migration does not happen to the left chest. Then you have cytis solitis, 
de-looped ventricle and dextrocardia. Now, sometimes what happens is that the looping happens on the left side. And in that situation, it causes a L-looped ventricle. That means the left ventricle is to the right of the right ventricle. And usually when it's L-looped ventricle, the heart swings from the left hemithorax to the right. And hence, normally, what you will have is situs inverses, L-looped ventricle, and mirror image dextrocardia. And that is what is true dextrocardia in situs inverses totalis. Wherein you can understand why the heart is structurally usually not. Now, if this shift of a L-looped ventricle does not happen, then it is going to cause levocardia with situs inversion. I think we will go through this once again. As we said, if it's L-looped ventricle, the heart swings from the left to the right. If this left to the right does not happen, then you will have levocardia with cyclic inversion, which is actually a very rare entity. So levocardia with cyclic inversion is also possible. Now, with this understanding, we will just summarize what we saw in the last two slides. As we saw, cardiac apex 5 watts to the hemithorax opposite the bulboventricular lupe. So in general, D-looped ventricles, left hemithorax, L-looped ventricles, right hemithorax. And this usually happens when you have atrioventricular concordance. And when you have atrioventricular discordance, somehow, the whole process doesn't happen systematically and the heart comes to lie in the center of the thorax, which is called mesocardia. So now with this understanding of the basis of why dextrocardia happens, we will look a little into clinical presentation. And I think it's very obvious that the intracardiac anatomy is going to decide the clinical presentation. So it's going to be very tough for us to think about it now. However, there are a few clinical clues which we have to be understanding. Now, most of the time, how is dextrocardia picked up? Now, sometimes if the child is completely fine, it gets picked up when the child goes for a chest X-ray on incidental uh, pickup or on a routine examination, it gets picked up. However, there are two syndromes which we need to understand which are related to dextrocardia. And hence, if a child has the following few signs, then it's important for us to look hard into detail. The first is the Poulan syndrome, which happens with situs solidus dextrocardia. And the second is golden hair syndrome, which happens with situs inversus dextrocardia. Now, the Poulan syndrome is characterized by absence of pectoralis major, ipsilateral syndactyly, polydactyly, and hyperplasia of the hand. So it predominantly has the upper arm and the finger issues. There is golden heart syndrome, as you know, it's called the oculo-auricular vertebral dysplasia with facial microsomia. And it happens with situs inversus totalis, where we also have exocardia. Now, whenever you want to be sure that the child does not have dextrocardia, you should look for following things. The first most important is see for any chest asymmetry. When it's dextrocardia with a congenital heart disease, you might find the right chest a little more prominent. Then look for gastric tympani, hepatic dullness, and cardiac dullness on percussion. And then see if you have prominent heart sounds on the right side of the chest. Associated intracardiac abnormalities, as we uh, discussed, happens much more common with situs solitus and much less common with situs inversus. And the common uh, problems which uh, happen in terms of syndromes with dextrocardia include a scimitar syndrome with situs solitus. As you know, Symmetra syndrome is a problem where you have 
a lobe of the lung which is not embryologically normally developed and it can have an aberrant arterial supply and a venous drainage and associated problems like atrial septal defect or patent ductal arteriosis. Psychosolidus dextrocardia has much higher incidence of corrected transposition, which is atrial ventricular and ventricular arterial discordance. Whereas cytos inversus dextrocardia is usually structurally normal, and the syndrome which is associated with it is Carpentinon syndrome, where you have absence of cilia, much more frequent respiratory tract infections, and uh, usually a lifespan is still in fourth decade. Now, having seen this, uh, we are not going to go into the detail of intracardiac abnormalities because then. It's going to be a variety which ranges from pulmonary atresia to AV septal defect to DORB to VSD, etc. The chest x ray. So you can look into the first x ray and see here the apex of the heart is to the right side of the chest and the liver is on the right side. That means this is dextrocardia with cytis solitis. It is not a pushed chest, a pushed uh, heart, but the apex itself is pointing towards the right. So it's going to be a dextro version dextrocardia. And you can see here the lung fields are oligamic with some cardiomegaly. The second x ray, you have the apex to the right. However, the liver is midline, which tells you that this is likely going to be. A site is ambiguous, dextrocardia, and might be associated with intracardiac abnormalities. As you can see, the left lung vascularity looks much more. So this is dextrocardia, site is solitary, and this is dextrocardia, site is ambiguous. This x-ray, if you can see here, the heart is on the right side. However, it looks more like a pushed heart because the right lung looks hypoplastic. There is some crowding of the ribs here. So this is more going to be a dextro position and not a true dextrocardia. Now coming to the ECD findings. So what happens when you take left precordial lead if the apex of the heart is on the right side? So as you can see here from V1 to V6, you can see that you have much smaller waves, R waves, in V1 compared to V6. So this is poor R wave progression from V1 to V6, which can give you a clue that this could be a dextrocardia. In addition to that, you can see here that in AVL and V1, I mean V1, the P waves are not seen nicely and they are negative which tells you that your P-wave axis is also, again, not normal. So based on the P-wave axis, you can judge the cytos, solitus, or inversus in a type of dextrocardia. And then internal cardiac problem is going to give you more changes in terms of presence of Q-waves in V1 might indicate that your septal depolarization is not normal and it is probably uh, a looped ventricles, etc. And when you have this, you need to take your right-sided precordial lead. So what all to look for in X-ray and ECG? Always make sure that your left-right marker is correct. Then you start looking for your apex of the heart and the position of the heart. Your position of the liver and the stomach. Remember, we spoke about scimitar. You see for any scimitar shadow, which is like a sword shadow on the right border of the heart, which could indicate that your right lung is not normal and hypoplastic. See for any non cardiac mediastinal concerns in terms of collapse or smallish right lung or a herniation. And in ECG, look for your P wave axis, your septal Q wave depolarization of the interventricular septum, and always get a right sided precordial chest uh, lead ECG. 
Now, with this understanding, we are going to go to the echocardiogram, which is the most important understanding in dextrocardia. And there are two basic principles here. Do not use your left-right button invert. Uh, some people do use this so that it gives you a little more comfort in understanding the infracardiac anatomy. However, the principle is never ever use it so that your understanding of left and right becomes very, very clear. And second is always start your echoes from subcostal. This is true for any child, which is going to give you a clue about dextrocardia just as soon as you put your probe. So this is levocardia, the first image. This is dextrocardia where your apex is towards the right, and this is mesocardia. So your subcostal is very, very important. And as you proceed with your echo, this slide particularly will help you. So let us just go through this slide before we go into the individual understanding. And what we're going to see first of all is the true dextrocardia, which is the situs inversus dextrocardia, wherein you have your left atrium to the right of right atrium. What happens in dextrovotion and dextroposition? Both of which are situs solitus, wherein the right atrium is to the right side of the left atrium. So as soon as you put your subcostals and you know that your heart is towards the right, then you further subdivide it based on your situs. So you look for your IVC and aorta also. And if your aorta is to the left and IVC is to the right of the vertebral column, then it's going to be situs solitus. And then you sweep and make sure where your right atrium and left atrium is. Whereas in inverses, your aorta is going to be the right side and IVC to the left side of the vertebral column. Now coming to the next step. If it's situs inversus, you're very clear. This is true dextrocardia. The problem happens when you have situs solitus. The next is you try to look for your axis of the heart. Now you can look for the major axis of the heart only when you go into the apical view. And how we will see a few slides further. The major axis of the heart is from the left shoulder to the right hip in mirror image and dextroversion. Whereas in dextroposition, your major axis is still pointing towards the left. So these two further sizes solitus can be differentiated based on the axis of the heart. The third differentiating point is your dextrocardiac tool and the dextroversion both of which the apex is in the right fifth intercostal space. In the sense that it's much away from the midline. Whereas in dextroposition, it's going to be just to the right of midline or reprosternal. That means it's a little more medial compared to dextroversion, dextrocardia. This again you will pick it up when you put your probe on the for the apical four chamber view. Now, how do we put our probe is the major control when we have dextrocardia. Now, your subcaution is going to be like any other child. Your suprasternal is going to be like any other child. Your apical view is also going to be with the cursor towards the left, like normal, but the probe towards the right side of the chest. The main issue is when you are doing your plaques and the short axis at the parasternal view. Now your plaques is basically the long axis. That means it's across the axis of the heart. That means you don't need to put your parasternal long axis in a mirror image compared to a normal heart. That means it should be from the left shoulder to the right hip. And when you come to the short axis, you will rotate it 90 degrees for two dextrocardia. There is in dextroversion, you might have to just rotate with by few degrees and it still comes from the left shoulder to the right hip. So it's not exactly like true dextrocardia. Whereas in dextroposition, your transducer is like a normally uh, oriented heart transducer because your base apex axis is like a normal heart. So your orientation of plaques is again going to be from right shoulder to left hip and short axis from left shoulder to right hip. 
We will see it in the next slide. If there is a confusion, we will repeat this once again. So now you can see here, this is mirror image dextrocardia. And we are going to see how we will put our probe. See, the probe is in a similar way with the cursor towards the left side of the baby and the transducer in a normal position in the subcostal view. And what do you see? So here you can see the apex is towards the right side of the chest. The apex is towards the right side of the chest and my sleep is from posterior to anterior. And you can see here, when you are starting, the pulmonary veins are towards the right side of the chest. This is the right ventricle because it has septal attachment. The right ventricle giving rise to the pulmonary artery and the aorta. So it's sighted in versus L looped ventricles with the apex on the right side. The right atrium is here, the left atrium is here. You will not invert the left right button inward. Now, when you come to the apical port chamber, you still hold the probe with the cursor on the left side, but you put your probe on the right side of the chest and you sweep from posterior to anterior. This is the right and this is the left. And you can see here the pulmonary veins are draining into the right side of the atrium. The coronary sinus here is running into the floor of the left atrium, which is on the right side. This is the right atrium, the left ventricle, mitral aortic continuity. So this is the left ventricle to aorta and this is the right ventricle to PA. So the great arteries are crossing each other. You have an L-looped ventricle and sinus inverse. So this is how your heart will look from the apical four chamber view, a structurally normal heart, but dextrocardia sinus inverse. Now we come to the most critical point. The parastinal short axis, as you can see here, the cursor is facing the left shoulder and the axis is across the left shoulder and the right hip. This is exactly perpendicular to the normal axis. And when you do this, your sleep is again going to be from posterior to anterior. And you will get a view which looks like a normal heart. So when you are doing a black view for a dexocardia, nobody other than you will know that this is dexocardia because the image will look exactly like a normal heart because you, the principle of the black view is across the axis of the heart. And hence you have seen the left ventricle, the right ventricle, and the Understood that the right ventricle is the ventricle which is the anterior ventricle for mirror image dextrocardia, and the left ventricle is the posterior ventricle, aorta, LA, coronary sinus, mitral valve, and in your sleep, you are seeing the pulmonary artery coming anteriorly. So, this is the parasternal long axis. Now, what do we do for short axis? We will rotate further 90 degrees, and hence your cursor will come to life at the left hip and you will get a parasternal short axis view across the great vessels wherein you know that this is right and this is left. So this right and left does not change. So this is the aorta and this is the left ventricle and the right ventricle. The left ventricle is the aorta and the pulmonary artery. So here you can see that the pulmonary artery is anterior bifurcating into RPA and LPA. And pulmonary artery is right and anterior to the aorta. The left ventricle, the mitral valve. So this is how you have exactly mirror image of a normal view. Now in this view, if you use the right left left button inward, you will see it like a normal heart. However, it's important for us to understand what anatomically the baby has, and hence do not use those buttons. 
So pulmonary artery is right in anterior when you have sighted inversely L looped ventricle. So that makes it I L I. Inversus L looped inversus, which is similar to S D S for oligocardia. Now, this is just a summary of how you would put a probe in a dextro positioned heart. So, if it's dextro position, you will put your cursor like a normal cursor, a pital four chamber like a normal cursor, the parasternal long axis like a normal cursor, and parasternal short axis like a normal cursor. However, you can see here that your position of the probe is to the right side of the chest very close to midline unlike the previous slide where the probe was much away from the midline so here the cursor is towards the right shoulder and the axis is from the right shoulder to the left hip like a normal heart and the short axis is like the normal heart from left shoulder to right hip so this is dextro position now this is just one slide of dextro version where you can understand that the cycle solitus. However, you have it where the uh, you have the dextro uh, version where you have the uh, apex towards the right side of the chest, but site is solitus. Now, when this is site is solitus and you see a cardiac problem inside the heart, intracardiac problem then in that situation you are going to suspect dextroversion much more than dextrocardia, I mean dextroposition. So this is how a scientist sonitus dextrocardia is going to look compared to scientist inversus dextrocardia. Now as we proceed, you can see here the apex is towards the right side of the chest and There are two AV valves with a large inlet PSV. The right ventricle and the left ventricle. And because it is a crisscross heart, it looks a little confusing in subpostures. This is the end of our understanding of dextrocardia. Any questions, please feel free to 